Hey guys and welcome back to a brand new video and another episode of the MotoGP 19 career mode here today and this is episode number two for rounds three and four for the USA Grand Prix at the Circuit of the Americas and also round four I believe at Jerez. Now in the last episode guys, episode number one, do watch the episode, it was in the top right hand corner of your screen, go click on the card and watch that race guys, it was Qatar and Argentina as the first two rounds of the season and we got our career mode underway and uh, we did a few things here and there and all in all it was a very successful first episode. For this one though, the objective is higher because I've raised the difficulty from 110 to 115. We're going to keep it on three lap races as uh, we do two races per episode and also in terms of updates, I've also updated a lot of other things. You might be able to see on the screen straight away, I've got a brand new number and I've been hard at work doing some changes and uh, I've made some big changes for this episode. So first of all, the R&D, we've got upgrades on the bike. We've upgraded the frame and the engine. So those two are the first two upgrades on the bike. Now in terms of our career progress here, you can see we're currently the team leader. So we are number one within the Angel Nieto team and we've got those two podiums in Qatar and Argentina. But now let's look at the rider customization because we have got updates, big, big updates. So first of all, we've changed the leathers a bit. So I've now got black gloves and black boots. Also, to add to that, we now have a custom-made rider sticker here. As you can see, we've got all the um, prototypes on the main screen, which are pretty cool to be fair. Some of them are really nice. I had the Professor before, but now I've got my own one. And um, I, had a th I, had a th I was thinking about it. What could I do? And I went for the calculator because... I couldn't think of a major trait of mine in terms of how I'm as a racer. I just tend to calculate a lot. I'm constantly on the fly. Whether it's F1 or MotoGP, I'm always kind of running the numbers and, you know, thinking about strategies and undercuts and, you know, pay, overall lap pace. And if I run at a certain pace, you know, how much would it take me to catch someone up or vice versa to pull away. And, yeah, I just find myself constantly calculating. So I thought, you know what, the calculator seems like also a cutting and uh, a fitting name as well because you don't just calculate time. You also calculate your overtakes, your moves, and uh, how your race is going to go. And I'm um, added a little team teeth over the T because the T is part of obviously my name Tom and Tom 97 and the teeth kind of represents a bit of a, a bit of an edge I have to me so you know I calculated edge if you will in a way so I thought that was pretty cool my first custom made um, little add on to the, to the actual race suit so really happy with that one let me know what you think in the comments guys about that but uh, yeah that was my first bit of um, additions I've done in this episode now we have other things of course we don't just have the rider sticker we now have a number here and as you can see there are the prototypes as we saw in the last episode which are all pretty cool to be fair and they're all really sick last time he was running number 90 but now I have my own number 97 as you can see here in obviously in white keeping it nice and plain but you know um, we're on a black bike so you can't really make out the outline too much there is a black uh, a backdrop slash outline or a shadow um, you can just about see if you look at the gold on the right hand side there, the little black just comes into play. Um, you'll see it better on a, on a bike that isn't black as a background. But we have a brand new number and I'm finally number 97 there. So really, really happy with that one because that's a number that I wanted the entire time. And then finally, the main event, the helmet. Of course, we had you know, lots of different helmets to choose from before. And this year, the selection of helmets is actually really, really good. I've got no complaints. Uh, Marlston did a fantastic job with the helmets. And uh, before, we had this one here, which is the Crazy Joker helmet. But now we've upgraded and uh, we have our very own helmet which I spent all morning on and uh, here we go then. So we've gone for the shark prototype because I like how they look, they look very aggressive and as you can see there we go there's the helmet in all its glory. I've gone for a couple of different shades of blue and also the actual base color of the helmet is a very very dark metallic blue and uh, we've gone for white light blue dark blue with the teeth at the back here as you can see looking really really good and then of course on top of the helmet as well we can just get on top there we have a nice bit of detailing. Originally I had an emoji on there just to test it out, but I've gone for my number and um, a nice little design there on the top. So all in all, we're now looking the part here and we're looking pretty damn good and uh, swagged out for this episode with the black overalls, the leathers, the custom name at the back, and of course the new helmet and the number. So with that being said, we're now going to jump into this episode, guys, and get to work for round three at USA in Austin, Texas. So let's jump into practice and let's try and do those R&D programs and also set a laptop good enough for Q2. Currently three tenths up on uh, Garcia. And now there'll be a little bit less now as Bruce Amos goes fastest. But I'm currently doing the qualifying or the quick lap simulation. I've already done the uh, first test, which was just for racing on Affinity. But I'm doing this one now to kill two birds with one stone, basically. So I'm hoping that this lap will be good enough for Q2, but also to uh, beat the time of threshold and uh, get this practice program secured. So here we go out the front of the corner then. Do we go P1 up to the line? 
Yes, we do. 25.2, I think that was. So we scored maximum points and job done in that program. So I think, in theory, if we have a look at the uh, weekend or the, or the session results here real quick. So we did a 25-2, one second up on Booth Amos. That should be good enough for Q2. And we've also done that practice program, which, by the way, we did, like I said before, the um, track affinity one. So we didn't do too well in that, but we still done it. And the quick lap simulation. The race one is just five laps long. And five laps on a Moto3 bike around Kota is so long. Like, it's longer than the race. So I'm not going to do it just yet. Um, I probably won't do this program until Moto2. Maybe a Moto3 or G Moto GP, sorry. So, um, yeah, for now we've got those two programs. A couple of points. Ten points, I believe, added to the... Um, R&D are the resource points. So yeah, development is done and the session is pretty much done. So now we're going to skip on towards Q2 and see if our lap was good enough to get into that part of qualifying. Okay, so here we are then for qualifying and we have indeed made it to Q2 with that lap in practice. So that's good news. So uh, I seem to have good pace around here, even on 115 AI. Uh, we're going to see in qualifying how we get on and if the AI do pull one out the bag. But uh, I feel confident I could probably go to 120% AI to be honest very soon and maybe even for the race. We'll see how it goes, though. I think we'll do this race on 115, and then for Hereth, we'll go for 120, I think. But uh, anyway, that's qualifying. Now let's move into Q2. So we're five minutes in, and nobody has set a lap yet, as you can see on the screen right now. So uh, again, I believe qualifying's a bit glitch at the minute because it's not working properly, so I'm going to go out and hopefully the AI go out with me and uh, set some lap times, and that way we get an idea of how competitive we truly are. So first of all, we're going to sort out the tyres. We're going to go for a soft front, of course, and a soft rear. For qualifying, I'm going to max out the performance. And uh, yeah, we're going to hit the track and let's see if we can try and bag ourselves three poles in a row so far in our debut season. A little bit hot into the hairpin there, just managed to get it slowed down. We're catching up to Booth Amos here, so if we're going faster than him, it's probably a good sign that we are going pretty damn quick. So here we go, then we're getting a nice turn on the back straight as well. You can see how much speed we're hitting. Now we've got to look for the brake point to make sure we don't overcook it under brakes. Nice and straight braking, and then we turn in. We need to try and get past Booth Amos without having any major issues if possible. Because otherwise we're going to lose lap time. Nice and tight through there. We're going to be on the outside though for the next left, which is annoying. A little bit wide again there. Not losing major amounts of time, but just little bits of time here. As uh, Booth Amos seems to get up to speed now to prepare for his qualifying lap. We go for the triple right. So let's see if we can try and maybe get the run on him here. Switch back. Nice tight line underneath. There we go. Down the inside, just hold on to that line, there we go. To be fair, it's been a very good lap, this one. I think it'll be faster than my practice lap. A little bit hot into the final corner there. We just about get it slowed down. We've got the power nice and early. And then on the juice, 23-0, that's a good lap already. That could be pole right there. Very happy with that lap, very happy with it. First time of asking, we seem to have good confidence and good pace around here. Well then, it's not even close. 23-0 compared to 26-1 to Tom Booth Amos. This is incredible. We are so fast. I'm going to have to max out a difficulty. It seems like last year's game, they said they made the AR harder, but I really can't see it. They seem just as slow. So we're going to max out a difficulty to 120. So let's do that first before we jump into the race. Okay then, so here we are back in the main menu. We've maxed out the difficulty now to 120. So no more we can do here. So we're now going to jump back into the race. And let's get racing here at Austin, Texas. Here we go then for the race at the circuit of the Americas. 
and uh, we're starting from pole position once again and as you just saw we increased the difficulty to 120 now we're going to change the tyres here and we're going to strap on a medium front and a hard rear for our three lap race here today and we're going to see how that works for us starting from pole position hopefully we can have a good start still haven't really got on top of the starts yet in this year's game um, no, I really struggled on last year's game to be fair but I eventually got on top of it and I've got to do that all again this year so uh, we're going to see how it goes but here we go then it's time for round three of the season for the USA GP here at Texas there we are brand new helmet and all and we're going to see if we can try and win the race. We've got a third in Qatar, second in Argentina. Will it be first today? Let's find out. Let's get into the racing. Here we go then, first gear selected. The five lights come on here at Austin, Texas. And it's lights out and away we go. Not a bad start actually, we seem to get away okay. Let's have a look behind. Okay, they're all coming at us. In towards turn one then. Easy on the brake. A little bit wide there, we're gonna get cut back underneath there by I think that's one of the Leopard bikes. We're gonna go down the inside at turn two. Oh my God, Garcia is hot. We have to run wide, we have to take evasive action and run wide off the track. We rejoin just behind Fanati, as uh, I believe that's Ben uh, Booth Amos. He hits the back of us and completely cuts that corner and takes first place. So not really sure what he's trying to do there, but that was a very rash move there from my championship rival either way. It's under P3. It wasn't that bad of a start to be honest, it was just because the rash and erratic driving, at, or should I say riding at the start really uh, set us back quite a bit. So we need to get ahead, screwed on together here and try and make some progress. Good exit there. Out of the left hander as we go down the hill. We're going to get the run on Fanati here. We're literally pushing him down the hill as we go down towards the hairpin. I'm going to try and run a bit of a wider line here if I can and try and come back underneath for a better exit. Get the power down nice and early. It doesn't quite work out though, how I was hoping to be fair. We've lost that little bit of ground. But we're in the race here, we're in the mix. I want to try and win this one and make it three podiums out of three and just the constant improvement of third, second, and first. We're getting a nice toe here off of Fanati here, the upgrades on the engine are paying off and look at the speed difference down the inside a little bit of contact there, we're going to go very narrow into the apex here, this is going to hurt us a bit on the power, can we straighten up nice and early, yes we do and actually we do hold on surprisingly to second place there, Fanati doesn't come back underneath so good move there for second place, a little bit of contact in the, in the process, my fault but we do manage to get it sorted out and stay in front now we can chase after my rival, Bruce Amos who we know is the championship leader, we're, we're 9 points behind him so we need to try and overturn that deficit today by outscoring him, winning the race. And if he gets second, we'll gain five points on him. So let's try and stay with him if we can and try and beat him. As that one draws to a close here at Austin, Texas. And so far, so good. Tires are looking like they're holding on quite well. I could have probably gone for a, a soft medium based off of the tire where I can see on screen. So the tires will probably be a big advantage coming in the Grand Prix. But lap one is done. Let's start really reeling in Ruth Amos here if we can. That's a fantastic exit. I think I might get a run here up the hill. Yes, I will. Here we go. The engine upgrade paying off big time here as we get a huge run. And we're going to go down the inside here even before turn one. Down the inside. Although he's trying to hold around the outside to be fair. Over that curb. Got to be careful. And he actually holds on around the outside to be fair. I was a little bit too nice there. A little bit too cautious. We'll come back at him though and try and get past him again. Let's try and get the pressure on him. And... Uh, really cause him some trouble. He's very wide here through the S's. I'm much tidier than him. Oh, I was thinking about going down the inside there, but he just came down for a low apex. Maybe that's the new AI working there, trying to, you know, cut off any overtaking opportunities. I fancy a move down the inside here, but again, he's just going to go late on the brakes. He's going to miss his apex though, and run wide. He's going to put him on the back foot, and we get the power down. There we go, he got out of shape. And uh, trying to defend me, you can see there he just didn't get the best line. And we're going to get past now this time, past Bruce Amos. Let's try and get it slowed down now for the hairpin. So this isn't my best corner. Get it slowed down. A little bit hot there. On the power though, so good exit. Can we stay in front now? Let's see how much of an advantage we have onto the straight. He's right there, he's with us. It's going to be a drag race. Now what's the straight line speed like when someone's towing me instead? 
Looks like we're staying in front for now. Look at that, it's a pure drag race here. And we're staying in front. It's all very close, but it looks like we have got the legs. The upgrades playing their part. As I take it easy on the brakes here. Oh, that's a wobble. We are just going to hold on. And there we go. P1 secured at the end of lap 2 or not. Maybe not. I thought I had a gap looking at the mini-map. But actually, he was up that one inside the entire time. So, Ruth Amos not done just yet. And as he makes the move, we're going to have to try and fight back. The AR seems to find a little bit of pace in the race, which is good. At least we've got some competition, which uh, after qualifying, I was a little bit worried we didn't have. But now we've got to try and get back past one more time here. Been a good race so far. I've enjoyed it. This is why I like these three lap races because they're, they're, they're short but they're action packed. There we go, that's pretty good. It wasn't the best final corner, but look at the speed difference here. We're going to pull alongside, and it's a pure drag race, and we've got way more straight line speed than him. Up towards turn one. On the brakes, he goes back down the inside in an aggressive manner, and he's not giving up without a fight. I've got to say, he's uh, hanging in there. Let's try and go flat through two. Going flat through here should give me the run into the S's, there we go, down the inside one more time, this time into the S section, there we go, this time the move's done because this is my strongest part of the track, we should stay in front here, let's see it out if we can, there we go, job done, now I can actually see him on the minimap, he's actually decided to separate from me, lovely stuff, right, now we can try and win this race, we've got the gap, we've got it all under control, over the hill, that's a fantastic line. There we go. Now and now we're separated. Right then, let's win this race. Here we go then. Through the final two corners. Great performance here today. Good recovery after a, a shaky lap one. A good battle with Ruth Amos, my championship rival, as we get a bit hot into the final corner. But here we go. We're going to win our first race in career mode here at Texas. Not really over the line, but I kind of fell in the process. Hopefully those will improve as we get along in the season. But there we go, job done. And we win here at the Circuit of the Americas. In the end, we set a 23-1, a very quick lap there. Only one-tenth or so off my qualifying lap, so very strong pace. And uh, even the AI as well, I mean, a 24-8 from Sergio Garcia. That's way, way, way faster than what they managed in qualifying. So the AI were clearly quicker in the race, and it wasn't just down to that difficulty increase. It just seems to be on this game, whenever I'm on the racetrack, the AI go faster. When I'm in the garage or I'm simulating time, the AI don't go full speed, and that's a little bit annoying. But with that being said, Kota is done, and we're now going to move into round four, Jerez. Well, look, before we jump into Jerez, I've just noticed I wasn't planning on showing this, but... Garcia, Amos, and myself are all equal points. So, um, wow, the championship wasn't how I remember it being for some reason. Um, I think Garcia was leading. So there you go. Very close to the top and three riders on the exact same points after three races. Okay, early on it seems like that AI have a little bit more pace here because uh, we're currently in FP1. That was my first lap and the AI have already set a lap that's nearly a second faster than me. Admittedly, my lap was not great. It was only my first lap around here, but still... It was a pretty okay lap, to be honest. I'm quite good around Jerez, and my muscle memory is quite good. So um, it seems that they are automatically have way more pace around here than Kota. So it might just be a, a Kota-specific issue, their lack of pace. So I'll do another lap and see where we are. But I think we'll see now through sector one. We're actually down, so there you go. Okay, 51.8 now from Garcia. AI are definitely quicker here then. We do improve in Sector 2, but it looks like the AI are actually showing their true pace around here, which is good to see. So that's more encouraging. I want a bit more of a challenge. Okay, that was a better uh, lap for me then. Not an incredible lap, but still pretty strong, I'd say. That final sector was quite good as well. I managed to hook you up quite nicely up to the line. And there we go. We go P2. Still 7 tenths of Garcia's time. So, looks like we do have some competition here, which is good. 
and uh, the AI have stepped up finally, which is great to see. But again, this was while I was on track. You know, Garcia set that up time while I was in the, on the racetrack, not while I was in the pit lane, which kind of also proves my point that the AI only seems to go fast whenever I'm on the circuit. Either way, let's pit in, let's fix the bike, get some fresh tyres on, and uh, try and improve our lap. Okay, so we've pretty much 11 minutes to go here. You can see on screen um, the gaps as they stand right now. And Sergio Garcia leads the way with the 51.6. And uh, Booth Amos just 6 to 7 thousandths behind. Very, very close. We're still P3 with that lap. So uh, we're still showing good pace. And you can see the AI, they're actually doing those laps, I believe, on mediums. So, um, yeah, it's looking much better around here in terms of competitiveness, which is good to see. However, we are still comfortable in P3, still looking good to be in the top 18, which is what Q2 is, the top 18. So I reckon I'm going to take a chance, retire from the session, and hope that the lap I did before was enough, because I think it probably will be. Okay, so qualifying is taking a bit of a turn, because look at this, we've got some rain. Very interesting. Let's see, first of all, though, if we're going to tackle Q1 or do we go straight into Q2? And the answer is we're straight into Q2, which is good. So that up in practice was good enough. But we're going to have to readapt our entire riding style. And for the first time ever on this game, we have some wet conditions. Let's get to qualifying and let's see how we get on. Wow, visually, this looks insane this year. And also visibility is a little bit more poor as well. Though. The actual raindrops actually come onto the screen now, which is something they didn't have in last year's game. So... Let's see then, qualifying, let's get to work. Just under 10 minutes to set a few lap times, so we're gonna take a very easy on this first one and uh, just see where the track is and then we'll try and build that confidence up. Okay, so our first lap comes to an end and I think it's not gonna be fastest, but it'll be a pretty decent lap, a decent reference, there we go. I seem to be pretty poor in sectors one and three where there's slow corners and good through two and four where it's a lot more high speed, so I need to try and improve in the uh, low mechanical grip areas as we have a, a huge moment there out of turn one. Let's try and improve in sectors one and three mainly. That's why I need to try and find some lap time. Ooh, that's a bit more there. We're gonna keep our foot in though, or keep our hand on the gas. A little bit hot into the final corner there, but we are looking to improve here. I found seven tenths in sector one, and that's kind of what I've carried over the lap, to be honest. Tires are fading a little bit though in terms of tire wear towards the end of the lap. Up to the line, do we improve? Not quite, two thousandths of the Laporta's time. We go P2 for now, so I'm going to have a little cool down, go back to the pit lane, strap on one more set of tyres and try and go one more time towards the end of the session. But so far, I'm loving this now. It's a lot more challenging now and I'm really having to work for it. Okay, so fresh tyres on. We're going to go again. Fanati is now fast. We've, we've dropped down to P5 as we have a huge moment there coming up again on the power. But um, I think we've done a 59.2, so it's very close to the top end of the table. But we are P5, so we need to try and find some time and improve here. Let's get ahead down and try and set a decent lap. Incredible sector one, absolutely perfect so far. Lost six tenths though in sector two. Oh no, that's not ideal. We've just lost the front. I'll try and go again, see if I can get back to the finish line in time. But I think there might be damage in the bike. I'm not really sure. We'll find out. I don't think we're damaged. I think we're okay. It was just a soft crash. It was just literally just dipping the front. So we might be okay to continue. But that was a shame. Sector one was so good there. Right then, one minute to go. We're down to P6 now, so one last roll of the dice. We're going to give everything on this lap. Let's see if we've got anything left in the tank to try and get first place. I messed it up completely. I'm still in the habit of pushing the joystick forward to lean the rider forward and gain more time, and I did that over that straight, and I've lost so much time through that sector. Bad mistake. That's going to cost me now. I'm not going to improve now because of that mistake. I'm going to push on, but I don't think it's going to be an improvement now. Rain's really coming down now as well. The all or nothing approach in the final two sectors. We gave it everything. Here we go then up to the line. Do we find any more time? Do we improve? I don't think we're going to be in, in, in improving anytime soon. And up to the line. There we go. 59.7. It wasn't to be, but there we go. P8. For the first time this season, we don't have pole. And the 120% AI seems to be improving. Apparently, the AI seems to get faster and faster every single race. If that's true, we might have to go back down soon. Because uh, the, the, the improvement rate from USA to this rate was quite alarming, to be honest. But either way... This is much better, a lot more competition, and uh, you can see there the real Moto3 number one riders in the form of Canet and Fenati and Masia. People that are normally in rule after the front, they actually are at the front now, and Canet there gets pulled by three tenths. Really dominant performance from him. But uh, with that being said, though, we're going to start the race from P8, so let's jump into it. It's time for the Spanish Grand Prix here at Jerez. Okay, then, so it's time for the race here at Jerez. The track is wet, but there is no rain in the air, so. We're going to be on a drying track in many ways, and it's going to be a very tricky race. This one from P8, we've got our work cut out again, a new type of condition with no rain falling down, just a damp track. 
we're going to have to try and get used to that as best as we can. And uh, the pressure is on. We started from 8th place, like I said before. So I want to try and go forwards in this race. And uh, my target is to get on the podium once again and try and make it 4 out of 4 in terms of podiums. And uh, try and start to find that consistency. First of all, though, we're going to change the tyres. And good thing is I didn't go through too many sets in qualifying, just in case it was a wet race. And um, it is indeed a wet race. So we're going to strap on a set of medium wet on the front and the rear and uh, yeah we're going to jump into things here and see how it goes as we jump into round number four for the Spanish Grand Prix here for Jerez let's get racing Here we go then, the five lights come on here at Jerez. Lights on and it's lights out and away we go. Not the best start. We're gonna lose a few places here down to P11, including to my teammate there, Arenas. We're gonna go down the inside though at turn one. A little bit hot on the brakes there. Completely misjudged that one to be fair. As I hit my teammate a couple of times. Down to P12 now, so we've lost quite a bit of ground here. I have to readapt to the conditions. On the pass straight away. Good exit there. We're going to get underneath Lopez. Just about. There we go. In the Mark 3DS. And now a nice and flat. Pretty much through here. A little lift at first. Just to play it safe. But we've got the momentum. And we've got the one on Antonelli there. So we're going to breeze past him as well. Now we've got Rodrigo and uh, Foggia. Antonelli back down the inside. Very widely. He comes up quite high. We're going to hold on though. And get a great exit actually. And power past both Foggia and Rodrigo there. And make up two places. So we're back up to 8th place, we've recovered nicely. Down towards the hairpin, this is going to be quite tricky. I'm going to go quite shallow here, and to avoid someone going down my inside. Booth Amos is down a P7, my championship rival, so he's not having the best of times, which is good. So, um, as long as Garcia's having a bit of a poor race as well, then we're looking okay. And this race isn't, you know, bad news just yet. But let's try and catch up to this kind of lead pack, if you like, and uh, pull away from those behind us. But like I said, we've only got 3 laps in this, so we've got to try and make every corner count and uh, Booth Amos has actually dropped off a little bit from the guys in front so we're starting to make up some ground here also following the AR's lines I'm going to start finding some confidence that I didn't have in qualifying and uh, hopefully find some more lap time I'm quite strong through here I love these two corners these kind of fast rights carrying the speed beautifully a little bit wide there onto that curb and I have to get on the brakes I don't normally like to but I take you know I don't want to take no risks on the curb down towards the final corner going to be a little bit hot there as are the AI I'm just kind of following their lines that's why I was a little bit hot on the power nice and early a little bit too early to be fair Garcia is into the lead so my championship rival is leading the way the other one is P7 so it's not all doom and gloom at least one of them is showing a bit of a poor race we've got a nice gap behind so we haven't got to worry about you know Toba behind us we can just focus on trying to line up a move on Booth Amos through turn one nice and easy we're still taking it in a relatively easy I don't want to go all out just yet I'll push a lot on the last lap if I can. This is one quite strong. Go flat out through three. In towards four, we go flat out through here. A little lift in this case because I'll turn in too late, miss my apex. Seems like the pace is very similar though between myself and the AI. Which is good. The 120% difficulty again. Paying dividends for us. That's a good exit though onto the back straight. A little bit wide onto the curb, but we are going to gain some time on Amos here. We're actually going to get the run on him. Down towards the dry sack hairpin. Can we try and go down the inside of my championship rival? I'm hot on the brakes. I'm going to try and keep it nice and tight, nice and low. That's very tidy indeed. And that is the move done there. Beautiful, beautiful move. That lower part, I think that's Delaporte. He's very narrow to that left hander there, so I'm not really sure what he's doing. That corner's normally flat. I don't know why I lifted so much. But we're now P7. Now we've got to try and keep Amos behind. He's actually behind his teammate Bindo, which is quite rare in this criminal so far. I think Garcia is still leading. He's actually starting to get a gap out at the front. So we need to try and limit the amount of points we lose to him. I don't think we're going to beat him this race. But if we can just limit the amount of points we lose, then uh, that'll be good for us. Here we go then. Halfway through lap two or three quarters of the way through it now pretty much as we go into sector four. A little bit too narrow there. Getting on that curve. Got to be careful with that. Through there. Again, a little bit early on the apex. But we're going to get away with having any incident. You can see on the minimap the kind of top nine. That's... 
you know, where the top guys are here today. We're going to get a much cleaner line this time through the final corner. We don't run deep. We don't really break with the AI. We do our own line, and it works out much better for us. We're actually gaining on Fanati here up to the line. One tenth off the fastest lap from Messiah, and then we're going to absolutely send one on the brakes here into T1. A little bit of contact there as we try to make our way through. But uh, we can't just get past just yet. Remember, Fanati holds on, but now we're going to have the inside for turn two. This time, maybe. No, Fanati still holds on. In towards turn three. Fanati is going to stay in front. Into four. I had a look down the inside there, but no way through again. So Fanati is holding on. It's looking like the best we can do this race is P6. As we are now on the final up of the Grand Prix. Nice and tidy through there. A little wobble, but that's a good exit. Similar to last time, we should get a nice run here on Fanati down towards the dry sack hairpin. Come on, let's have a go here on the brakes. Let's be brave. I'm going to have a look, but Fanati actually holds on, to be fair to him. Good defensive riding from him so far this lap. I've tried to get past a couple of times, and he's held on. That's a good exit for him there. Can we go flat through here? Yes, we do. We keep our gas all the way in there. Nice tight line. This is going to be quite interesting because we've actually caught up to those in front. So all it's going to take is a couple of good dives here. And we can make up a few paces at once. A little bit wide though. That's going to hurt me a little bit. That's going to cost me some time. Come on, we're running out of time here to make a move. A little wobble there. I need to have a very strong two corners. These next two right-handers have to be perfect. That first one's good. That second one's good as well in fifth gear. There we go. Down the inside. A little bit of contact there. We almost got off the bike. I tried to send one, but it didn't work out. And I think it's going to be P7 for us in this race. I tried my hardest, but it wasn't to be. And it's going to be P7 for us in Jerez. Garcia wins. So there we go. That's the first kind of big blow in the championship in a way. And the 120% AI are starting to really um, not affect us, but, you know, give us a good race there. And as you can see, we come home at P7. We actually had good pace, a very similar pace to everybody else. Uh, Binder actually brought home the fast up of the Grand Prix with 55.2. And Garcia wins it. The good thing is, Amos actually came home P9 behind Kaito Toba. So that's good news for us. But that being said, those are your race results. And now let's look at the Riders Championship. We are second, 16 points behind Garcia and two in front of Amos for now. Della Porta a little bit further back so we're sitting comfortable in p2 at the minute which is good news and in terms of the team championship we are currently from what i can tell p2 so that's not too bad two points ahead of straight alicia and uh, crp green power lead the way with binder and of course uh, booth as well so um not too shabby there but all in all guys that is going to be it for this episode in the moto gp rider career mode here if you did enjoy it then drop a like on the video guys and also get subscribed for daily formula one and moto gp content and turn notifications to not miss a video from me and finally check out these two videos on your screen if you have missed them but other than that guys thank you so much for watching this video i'll see you on my next one very soon but until then it's goodbye from me